Good afternoon, everyone. I am Flor Sanchez, I'm the district parent liaison for the district of San Elisario. Uh, first, I want to thank all our parents for making time to attend this meeting and giving us the opportunity to connect with you all and to be uh, able to serve you uh, better. Uh, thank you again for to our personnel as well to be here in our meeting. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce Ms. Santa Garcia. She's the Parent liaison for Garcia Middle School, and she'll be introducing some of our district personnel. Thank you, Flor. Um, yes, uh, my name is Santa Garcia I'm from Garcia Enriquez Middle School, uh, parent liaison. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, today with us, um, also the technology director. Good afternoon, parents. Thanks for everything that you do. My name is Horacio Hernandez, and uh, I'm the IT director here for San Lisario ISD. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Um, also today we have our staff members representing each campus. I will name each campus and if you will please introduce yourselves. Loya Primary. Good afternoon, parents. My name is Julissa Esquivel. I'm the proud principal of Loya and Brano also. Thank you for your support. Good afternoon, parents. I am Sylvia Graves. I'm one of the district social workers, as well as a homeless liaison, foster care liaison, and added to that is the military liaison. Thank you. Alarcon Elementary. Good afternoon, parents. Um, my name is Leticia De Santos. I am the principal of Alarcon Elementary, and uh, we just want to thank you for all that you do. Welcome. Good afternoon, parents. My name is Nora Garcia. I am the school counselor at Alarcon Elementary, and thank you for your service and all you do for us. Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Villa, counselor over at Sambrano Elementary, and parents, thank you for joining us and for all that you do. Thank you. Um, Garcia Enriquez Middle School. I'm Richard Salcido, proud principal of Garcia Enriquez Middle School, and thank you for everything you do. Thank you. San Elisario High School. I think you have to unmute yourself, Miss. Could you not hear me? Now we can. Sorry, I'm April Marioni, San Elisario High School principal. Thank you. I'm Nora Almanzar. I'm a counselor here at San Elisario High School. Welcome. I'm Miss Teresita Parra. I'm housed at the high school as well. I am one of your district social workers, as well as your homeless liaison and foster care liaison. Welcome, parents. Thank you for taking the time to be here. We appreciate it. And our CTE coordinator. Good afternoon and welcome to San Elisario. Uh, my name is Sandra Sanchez. I'm your CTE coordinator for the district and thank you for your service. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Also, we have assistant superintendent, Dr. Segovia. I don't think he's in. For Okay. Did we um, Corrego? I thought we did. Yes. Corrego Elementary? No, I'll take the, this opportunity to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Teresa Wilkes. I am the proud principal of Alfonso Borrego Elementary School. Super excited to have you joining us today and thank you for all you do. Good afternoon. I'm Mrs. Haynes. I'm the counselor here at Borrego Elementary. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Haynes. Uh, next, Superintendent, Dr. Mecca Chap. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Um, I want to start by thanking our parents for making a little bit of time to join us today. Um, look around the screen. These are the faces that um, are continuing to commit to work alongside. Uh, we're all wearing purple for your children today to help support 
the work that you all do. We want to thank you on behalf of our district. I serve proudly as superintendent. I'm Jeannie Mesa Chavez, and we are so thankful that you're joining us here today. We are being very deliberate and intentful with purpose to try to meet with you. Um, we, we now have emails that we, you know, text, and I know that we always send information out anyways, uh, but we want to try to help and be part of helping transition your families, especially when they're a, you know, there, there is a need to do so when uh, your military service or that of your spouse's military service um, is, is uh, something that we need to be aware of and that we, that helps us help our children be successful. So with that being started, being stated, let me get started. We want to know how we can help your child. And I know that we have a few of our parents here. Um, these are a little bit of the questions. If you can help us out by either unmuting yourself, you the parent, or if you can type into the chat if you're shy, um, I would we would like to hear from you um, what, what are some of the things that you feel that our district can help your child with? Um, do we have any of our parents who would like to speak to that? Congratulations, Mr. Harrison. Um, I know the district does a lot with our children, and I think with the military kids, just assisting sometimes, you know, when parents are deployed or there's only one parent at home. Uh, maybe assisting with assignments. Sometimes I know it's it's hard. Some parents, like my wife, works, so if I'm ever deployed, um, it's going to be hard for her to help the kids with their assignments, getting them turned in, and also you know she works from 6 a.m. till 5 in the afternoon some days. So just uh, the teachers understanding that sometimes the kids may get a little behind if parents are deployed, but understanding why that they're you know getting behind. That's a very good point. Thank you, Mr. Harris. And I know our staff is listening um, and and we are going to set up processes to help us uh, better understand um, and even the notification of when that does happen so that we have a process in place. So, um, you know, that's that's a really, really good point. Um, do, do any of our parents who are also attending anything that you would like to add to uh, what Mr. Uh, Harrison has indicated? Hi, yes, um, the only thing I can add to that is, I guess, just checking in on the kids. Um, I know my husband comes and goes often, so just that transition. Um, and I'm constantly running around with my little one, too, and then I have school as well. So I guess just I guess just just to check in every now and then. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ms. Gonzalez, for sharing that information with us. Like, I've indicated our, we're listening. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. We want to make sure that we capture uh, the information you all are sharing with us because that is our intent. Um, anyone else? I think we said we had three parents here. I want to make sure we hear everybody's voice. I wanted to say the same thing like uh, Mr. Harrison was saying. Uh, just uh, uh, it's it's a it's a little bit hard. Maybe it's not it's not just a military family, but also. To, to any family with uh, two, two working parents, mother, father, uh, just, you know, coming home and then having to having to still, you know, uh, get back to school work that was in assignments and things. So, uh, like Mr. Harrison was saying, just uh, a little leniency and stuff on on maybe like assignments and, and, and work wise, because uh, uh, like myself, in one case, uh, you know, I come home and, you know, still, still uh, have to deal with it, you know, not deal with, but uh, Make sure that the you know, the little ones turn in their assignments and stuff. So it, it takes a lot of time. Uh, I mean, it, it's not just us that's having to do with it. It's the whole majority uh, population. Uh, but also in, in one case, like military families, uh, not all military families are from El Paso. They don't have that. They don't have that. Uh, I guess that that background, not the background, but uh, the the help from grandparents, from family members that are local. Uh, so you know, there's a lot of parents that are here that. You know, their kids, uh, they can they can live in with a you know with an aunt, a grandparent, that's taking care of them while you're in school. A lot of military families don't have that that uh, family background here in El Paso. Absolutely, that support system is not there. Very, uh, very good point, Mr. Lopez. We're thankful you're joining us. All of this helps us 
um, to be able to understand better. And that's why all of our staff is here. And thank you, Sir Horacio, that I like this view better because this means we're having a conversation. I know that we can probably have Ms. Floor enter the questions on the chat, but um, we'll probably, we'll, 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 I like looking at everyone so that all of us can kind of know who we're talking to. We wanna make sure that you're able to make connections. Um, you know, what is the best time for parents to attend meetings? You know, Mr. Lopez, we'll, we'll start with you. What, what do you, what, what's, what's a good time? I know we had one today at 10 in the morning, we did Spanish and then we had another one right now. Uh, we have tried evening meetings because we have our monthly pro progressing together meetings and we uh, had those uh, prior pandemic. We had them in the evenings and, and one time we had only one parent attend um, and we've had them at different times. But sometimes we've, you know, not everything from the pandemic, although it's been tough, there's been some things like this virtual connection for some parents that may be at work, this works for them. Um, but what other times would be, you know, uh, or dates uh, are best for, for you all to attend meetings? Mr. Lopez, we'll start with you. Uh, with me, I have a busy schedule. I do a lot of training, training for, uh, uh, in the post office, so I do a lot of new hire orientations. So I'm back and forth, and uh, I think it's just during lunchtime, like now, uh, it's, it's I can uh, I can manage. Uh, take you know, take if it's like at one o'clock, I'll take my lunch late, and it's it's usually during lunchtime uh, that I can break away from work and catch on some kind of virtual training or uh, uh, meetings or appointments. This is where I need to just shout out to you, Mr. Lopez, the fact that you're taking your lunch time to engage, to let us know how we can make our school system better for your children. Um, thank you so much. I think that's a point well taken. I think, yay. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Um, what about uh, you, uh, Ms. Gonzalez? Let us know. Um, this time works out great for me, actually. I'm currently doing full-time school in the evenings. Um, I do have my little ones, but um, my daughter's in her room, but this, this works out good for me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That information is being noted. Mr. Harrison, I want to go where your background is. So let us know, Mr. Harrison, what are good times for you or your spouse so that we can have, uh, try to fluctuate our meetings? Uh, well, I mean, for us, it's kind of tough. I mean, I'm, I'm here at the school uh, from mm -hmm. 15 in the morning until 4. And then right now I have practice in the afternoons, but uh, lunch times uh, would supplement for me and my wife as well. She works at the hospital at Beaumont, so for her, her lunch kind of fluctuates because she's in the OR now. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you put a time out and we'll, we can accommodate. So no, it's not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Harris. And I think that's one of the things why we're recording this meeting because we want to make sure that we're able to post it on our website. Uh, that we're going to have specially designed for our military families because sometimes we know that you can't attend. And we want to be able to facilitate that information. Um, let's start with you, Mr. Harrison. Are there any special resources that you need that you feel our district can help provide your child for success? Um, resource wise, uh, I mean, I've got my kids range from some right up to the high school. Um, so I think at the high school level, the new college current uh, military readiness. Um, teacher here, she does really well reaching out and I've been able to provide her with some contacts as well. And just all, even all the way down to the, to the, I guess, sombrano and the little ones, just giving the kids, I guess, the opportunity to understand the military, what the military does uh, on both aspects. Cause you know, a lot of students don't see both sides of the military. They only see what's in the movies. Um, so I think getting just the more recruiters going to be coming in, more military coming in, not necessarily recruiting students, but kind of just explaining to the students what the military does, um, kind of giving them a more broader idea of what the military does would help. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. I saw some of the heads of our colleagues um, nodding their heads, and actually we've already had conversations about their military connected uh, family plan that they need to submit. I know I've already checked one and, and the others are, are coming soon, I know, and we'll be reviewing those. Uh, but that definitely um, is something, you know, it, it's one thing to see it in the movies, uh, but it's another thing when you actually have a family member and, and especially like Mr. Lopez indicated, there's a lot of relocation, a lot of adjustments that our, our students 
your families, your sacrifice. So absolutely, we'll keep that in mind. Ms. Gonzalez, you wanna share with us what resources you feel that you would want the district to consider in order to help uh, your child or children to be successful? Um, I honestly can't think of anything. I know my daughter goes to Borrego and they're all very great there. She's doing good. I can't think of anything to add to that. And that brings a smile to our principal, Ms. Esquivel's face. So, I mean, I'm sorry, Ms. Wilkes' face, uh, you know, uh, to just, uh, you know, the, the, the kudos are great. We'd like to hear that. But if you can think of anything afterwards, don't, don't hesitate from communicating with Ms. Wilkes. Ms. Esquivel is smiling too. So that's why I'm looking that way. Um, Mr. Lopez, can you share with us any of the resources you feel our district should consider to help your child or children be successful? I think the San Luis School District does pretty well on on uh, like military appreciation, Veterans Day parades. Um, you know, uh, I think San Isario for you know uh, ISD does very well with uh, with things for our military. Um, but I, uh, what I've done before, I've been uh, I graduated from San Isario myself, so I'm, I'm from San Eli. Uh, my kids go to San Eli, like like Mr. Harrison said. Uh, I've you know kids ranging from Sombrano, Alarcon, uh, in high school. Um, one thing I've done before uh, in my you know military career, I've done like a little uh, with a librarian, with a school librarian in, in Alarcon, and this was the years before. Uh, I used to bring in troops from from Fort Bliss, and then have them read, uh, you know, read read with the with the kids like a little, uh, you know, uh, the, the librarian would come in and bring in a, a, a you know a book for us to read, and it was everything was scheduled, so uh, maybe something bringing something like that back. Absolutely. I, I see a lot of nods and I see some writing taking place and I see Ms. Laura Chavez uh, down here. My apologies. I did. I think I was focusing on who they had their cameras on. If, if this is usually we have folks who don't have their cameras on, that means maybe they've stepped away. But Ms. Uh, Laura Chavez, would you like to join the conversation and talk to us about some resources? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, no, I think I just um, added a few minutes ago about what we were previously talking about, um, that support that Mr. Lopez was talking about, um, how so many of us don't have family here. For example, I just have my mother here and it makes it, you know, extra hard to to do things on a daily basis. That's, you know, mostly also the reason why I don't work because I know my husband, you know, can just leave on a moment's notice and there's no way I can just, you know, who am I going to leave the kids with? So um, just maybe that that extra support, perhaps maybe we could even start like a, a military group here for um, uh, our San Elisario um, parents. We could maybe, I don't know, exchange numbers and check up on each other every now and then, um, see if anybody needs anything, because it can be so simple, like, like the, the littlest things, you know, a lot of us with little ones, you know, if you're by yourself and you've got three, four little ones, you know, just to go to the store, it can be such a hassle. So I, I um, you know, I offer myself, if anybody is out here or listening after the recording, um, let me know. I, I will be more than willing to even go, you know, <laughs> take you those diapers that you need at late at night that you forgot or something. So, you know, it's a lot of the times it's those little things. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Absolutely. You know, th those are the things, uh, those are those communities and, and now virtually sometimes you just need someone to, to talk to or sometimes just see in person. I know that when I, you know, uh, you know, we, we have these conversations about what do people need and us being able to hear this um, lets us know, look, this is what our parents are saying. This is what they're indicating um, and, and definitely building those networks of support. Uh, especially for those that don't have, um, you know, uh, anyone who can help them with childcare, at, or even as simple as, like you indicated, is getting those diapers for for the little ones. So, uh, where I know that Miss Flora is is feverishly writing down the information. So, absolutely. Um, all right. So we've we've kind of talked a little bit, but let's let's hear more specific. And and I know this is com almost like burying your soul, especially since we're. We're recording this and we're going to be sharing this, but what specific challenges uh, would you like to share? Because I think that that's going to help our staff here understand um, 
I, I don't know. I, I'd like to hear from, from our parents and we'll start with you, Ms. Chavez. Tell us what specific challenges you would like to share. You mentioned right now just building that network. Is there anything else that comes to mind? Um, you know, not necessarily just at the moment. Um, I, I think I'll elaborate just a little bit more on I am not in the military, but my husband is right now. Actually, he's just reserve. But even then, they they just leave, like I said, at a moment's notice, and it just makes it, you know, a little bit hard to to go on and continue with your uh, routine. So um, there can be so many challenges, like I said. But um, I, I guess I would also agree with what they were saying uh, before as to um, the schools may be checking up a little bit more on the kiddos, but I, I do feel like they do a great job already. I know that um, Ms. Villa, well, my kids are still little, so I know Ms. Villa is always, you know, keeping us in mind when it comes to the military, all the, you know, Veterans Day, um, anything like that. It, it just helps that, you know, we're, but we could be tighter, a tighter community, and, and it, it just, it never hurts to to know who's out there and, you know, even create friendships and and, Stay in touch and and know that there's somebody out there who's going through the same thing that that you are. And maybe, you know, the spouses a lot of the times, you know, we feel alone because the, you know, our our husbands leave for months and months at a time. I know, you know, my husband, he's reserved now, so he doesn't leave as much anymore. Um, but yeah, they're they're gone for months and months and and it can be really hard, not just, you know, with those little things, but also I guess um, psychologically, just it can be very lonely. So if there's, you know, anybody out there that can, you know, just a, a simple talking to to the spouses, it, it's a big deal. Absolutely, and you know, Ms. Chavez, before it slips my mind, you said something right now. You know, you said you don't work. Well, it is work when you're at home with children. You know, because you you have a whole different schedule, and and for those. For, for those of us, all of us have experienced this pandemic a little bit differently, right? But for those of us who have children and, and we were trying to work from home, I know what you're doing. You're working. So, you know, I credits to to any stay at home parent uh, because there it's a different kind of work. Um, the only difference is the, the dollar value is, you know, I think the, the U.S. will go bankrupt. Definitely. So uh, we know you're taking care of our most precious future and that's the children that we are um, mutually trying to work hard for here. Um, Mr. Lopez, do you want to share any specific challenges aside what you've indicated? Uh, probably the same. Uh, I think I would say uh, in case uh, like I, I uh, in, in my own personal personal life, uh, I've deployed num numerous times and I think that's the hardest time for uh, our, our kids uh, when, when, the, when, when, you know, when we're gone. And it's not just months at a time. It's for it's, you know twelve months, fifteen months at a time. And uh, I think uh, just that identifying uh, when when you know have a parent that's deployed, uh, you know just just to double check double check on the on the child because that's just added stress uh, aside from you know regular school work and everything else. Uh, just just that that time frame when when the when the military member is gone is is added stress and it can add uh, a, lot, a lot of stress to. Uh, to a child. Absolutely. Ms. Gonzalez, you want to add? Actually, yeah, that's actually what I meant by check in earlier. Um, my husband's been gone for like a year already, comes comes down weekends every now and then, but um, my daughter does good in school. She's a good kid, but um, she she won't openly go and, at, and say, you know, I'm sad or, you know, that's what I meant just by a check in. Every time, like they need to transition from, oh, dad is home. Oh, dad has to go again. It's just that emotional. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Don't worry, Miss Gonzalez. We we've seen it all. We we've seen all kinds of stuff in the background. You just keep leave, give, giving our students love back there. Um, and our schools are open. If you want to send them in, if you need a little bit about a, a break too, because I know how that feels. So, Mr. Harrison, do you want to add? Uh, yes, ma'am. I think um, for my family, one of the biggest challenges that we had, 
I was actually moving here to Texas. So my oldest son started school here when he was in Loya and then Sombrano. And my second oldest as well, he did pre pre K and then we, uh, I reenlisted and we moved to Germany. So we were in Germany for a few years. And it was a big transition for my, well, my, my wife, for one. She's born and raised here in El Paso. Now, you know, I think as far as she went east was maybe San Antonio once when she was a kid. And as soon as I got to Germany, I deployed like three months of being there. Uh, and the unit that I was with, I was deployed. I was there for four years. I was only in Germany for about a year of three. I was deployed pretty much every six or day, nine months. Then we left there and came to, to support Riley. Uh, so my kids went to military school on bases pretty much most of their formal education career and then when we moved back when i got off active duty we came back to el paso and they started school here it was a shock to them the star test the it's just the way in which school was done here in texas and for that first year uh you know my kids were a honor roll students you know they were at top of the world in kansas and germany and came here and grades, you know, went down for that first year. And even me as a parent, I took my first year off active duty. Uh, thought I was just wanted to be done with the military and stay at home. And I lost my mind for that first year, which is why I came back to doing, finding a full-time job. Um, but I didn't, you know, felt bad trying to help them with school because Texas is just, it's a different beast when it comes to school. Um, and so I think seeing how my kids struggled that first year, maybe having some kind of a program that does identify the kids coming in to say, okay, hey, we're going to integrate you guys into star testing and ELC that, you know, just a lot of formal standardized testing here that a lot of states don't do. Um, you know, Fort Riley falls under USD 75, which is the county right outside, but it's still not on the same level as Texas as far as schools go. So um, I think just identifying the students as they come in as military kids to say, okay, hey, listen, this is what, this is how we're going to transition you guys into, you know, more workload uh, in this in this course credit uh, testing, star testing, things like that, so that way the kids don't fall behind. And again, with the stress for a lot of kids who are A on O students to bring home a C, it it brings them down, you know, and they stress out about it, and you know, it leads to other things. So, and that was one big challenge that we we dealt with the first year. Like I had to, I became a guest teacher just so I could figure out what was going on in school to help my kids at home. Yeah. You know? And and I know I see my staff here. Our staff are all of us. We're nodding. We 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 hear you, and we're going to be making a difference for that. And you know, Mr. Harrison, you're right. The T in Texas for some uh, means tests, but in San Eli, it means we're going to do this together, and we're going to get through this together. And so. Um, that's what the T in Texas means in San Eli for us. And so we are so thankful that, you know, you all have taken the time to, you know, talk to us. I know that we've touched a little bit on how can uh, we assist uh, with parenting while service members away. We've talked about those networks, reaching out, you know, maybe even reaching out to those uh, of our children who are not going to be the ones to vocalize that they need something. Um, we're, we're going to take care. We're going to take care of that, Ms. Gonzalez. We're going to make sure that there is more outreach so that your child is not feeling like nobody, nobody cares. We do care and we just need to be made aware. I think we have, uh, we're adding direction. Obviously, it's not just going to be for our military families, but clearly you all have an extra burden that you carry um, as you're trying to engage in your daily lives. Um, and, you know, we, we want our kids, our students to be to be more than just okay. And so with that being stated, is there anything else from our parents that you think is vital for our staff to hear uh, regarding um, the military situation, um, you know, whether they're on reserves or deployed? Is there anything that you think is, is you want to add? We're going to be having more meetings, but this is our introduction of, of where we are right now. But is there any one of our parents who would like to share something at this point? Um, hi, uh, me again, Ms. Chavez. I, I do want to just um, add a little experience that I had when, you know, my oldest child is now 10 years, so this was nine years ago, um, when my husband deployed to Afghanistan. It, it was almost as if he just, uh, well, they, they told me he was basically traumatized because one day my husband was there and then the next he just saw him every now and then on a screen 
And back then, you know, it, you know, for having issues with the internet now, <laughs> imagine back then. <laughs> um, and it was just hard. It, it's so hard on the kids, and, and kids are resilient, yes. But you know, it goes back to how much we need to be, um, you know, supportive of them and understanding because a lot of them, as you said, they are not as local. Actually, my my little one, he was one at the time, he was saying basic words like mama, you know, papa, dad, awa, things like that. And he just went to not talking at all. He just shut down and he didn't want to talk anymore. He didn't. So they, you know, all kids will react differently and some of them will hide it and some of them will, you know, uh, maybe throw tantrums. Some of them will, you know, as depending on their age, but it can be very difficult for them. So. So going back to, you know, maybe a little bit more support. Um, I'm not saying that you all are not because you have all been wonderful. Like I said, um, the, the principals are social workers, everyone, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit more support and checking up on, you know, those spouses who are also going through a lot back home here, back home and um, the children who, who are going through, okay, you know, I'm still supposed to keep my grades up. I'm still supposed to do this and do that, but yet, I'm missing my dad or I'm missing my mom. So it, it's a lot. You know, you just mentioned something, um, and I know from the education stat standpoint, uh, you indicated, you know, your child went from speaking to not, you know, becoming nonverbal. And, and when, you, when you said that, it made me think of, you know, the situation that children are placed in, you know, through no fault of their own. Um, we have the potential to either make a positive impact to help them deal with the situation, or we can change their personalities forever. And so that is why I'm so glad that our team members are here listening, because they're not hearing it from me. It's one thing that I can say, you know, we're going to go out and support our military students, but they need to hear from you, our parents, which is, you know, why we're so thankful that, you know, um, you are here. And, and Mr. Harrison came back for a second dose in, a, in, a, in another language, right? So... Um, Mr. Mr. Lopez, uh, do you want to add anything? No, same thing. I just uh, like I like like Mr. I was saying, like when when the kids are when the you know, parents gone, I think uh, just uh, just to take the level of stress out of the kids, uh, just keep them entertained. Like keep them with the, you know uh, suddenly you know, provide some activities for them to do after school, uh, things like that that that'll keep them keep their mind. Uh, away from, you know, feeling loneliness and, they, and, you know, that time frame. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez? I don't think I have anything else to add. <laughs> All right. And if you do, we're going to tell you how to get a hold of us in just a minute. Mr. Harrison, anything else? Uh, no, ma'am. I would just say, you know, the need to network is is greatly because based off of my experiences, different places, Sometimes we don't know people who have needs. Um, for instance, when we moved back from Germany to Fort Riley, my vehicle was in transit. You know, so I didn't have a car. We luckily I lived on base, so my unit was really good. They, you know, they picked me up and take me to work. But way out here in San Eli, going all the way to Fort Bliss out of the vehicle, you know, trying to take a cab or something like that, it, it's it'll add up. And so maybe starting something where we can you know, any sort of that might end up out here in San Eli. But live, you know, working for a blitz, you know, helping them get to work or just around here in town, you know, rides and things like that. Because uh, that that need is great. I so said I've gone, I've gone places and been months without a vehicle or, or had to rent a car uh, when I got to where I was at until my vehicle arrived. So, you know, that that need is great. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Another good point. I know that uh, we've reached out to the Fort Bliss parent liaison, and I know that our district liaison, Ms. Flora Sanchez, just is going to be. Uh, continuing to, um, you know, collaborate and inquire so that we can improve the services on how we can best help. I know, Ms. Flora, that uh, now we're going to transition, or I'm going to do the military family photo. Um, if it is not too much to ask of you all, if you can submit, I know, Mr. Harrison, we received one from you. It's beautiful. But if you have a family picture of your, you know, your family with a service member in a military uniform, we would love to have those pictures. If you could submit those to us, um, you know, uh, we do plan to do something very special. Your submission is going to be where you are indicating you would like us to use it. 
Uh, and so if you have, uh, you know, uh, a family photo of, of your family with the service uh, person in, the, uh, in uniform, we'd love to have you send it in to us. Ms. Flor, can you share uh, the next information on the uh, military family uh, connected email address? Yes, uh, San Elisario Independent School District created uh, an email address for military connected uh, families. Uh, and the reason that it was created is uh, to assist you better if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns that you would like to share with us. Uh, I'll be getting that the email. So is Dr. Mesa and we'll be replying to you to our best knowledge. Also, you all have my email, my district email. I'm the one that sent you the agenda for those that received the agenda. And if you feel more comfortable emailing me to my uh, district email, uh, feel free to do so. I'm here to assist you as much as, uh, as I can related to, to the military connected uh, families. So our email will be mcf at net and it's a it's an email for our military connected families to assist you better. So with that being said, um, that means if you have an urgent situation uh, that you just want to connect and the schools happen not to be open and and uh, that's the email because I will get it and Miss Floor, yes, I will get it and we will make sure that we communicate with the appropriate administrator if need be. That's yet another form. If you look at your individual campus website, there's also a similar email if you want to connect directly to the campus administration. So um, that those are all on the individual websites. Um, at this time, is there any other um, sharing of information or comments? Is there anything in our chat that we need to share? Ms. Ford, can you check that out for me, please? Yes, Ms. Wilkes just, well, there's one uh, that Ms. Laura had put previously, but she already uh, informed us of, of that. Uh, now, Ms. Wilkes, she's sharing with us that the military has a family readiness group that meets with the families and the spouses of deployed uh, soldiers. Should the community develop a family support group for military families, please consider inviting us to be part of that group so we can have the home and school connection. Very good. So I think we're off to a good start. Um, from any of our staff, any questions or any comments that you may have? I know that I saw Ms. Garay pop in. Thank you for joining us. Um, what, any, any comments that any of our staff or any questions that, um, that you may have? Ms. Uh, Dr. Mesa Chavez, I, I just want to thank the families for being here today and for all of the wonderful input that they provided. I think it, it was um, eye opening and, um, you know, just communicate also to just keep those communication lines open. So we know, you know, when we're when anybody is deployed, family members deployed so that we can, of course, we're going to try and implement some like monthly pulse checks or but also like once that happens so that we can best serve you and your and your family as a whole. So thank you very much. Uh, it was very informative. And and for those who have not heard Ms. Haynes sing, we'll, we'll catch her at one of our next military connected uh, family meetings and she'll have to honor us there. Let me prepare a song. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else on our uh, San Luisario ISD staff that would like to share or ask questions? Or I would just like to thank uh, those parents from Sembrano. I know we have your pictures displayed out there. They're beautiful. So thank you for sharing those with us. And we look forward to more pictures, but we do appreciate the, the support that you're giving us. Um, I know Ms. Gonzalez, I hear little ones on the back. So I'm going to recruit. I'm at Loya also. We need some three, four year olds to begin school. So we're there also for the new year. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Dr. Ms. Chavez, I, I would like to share. Um, my my dad served in the military and my husband did three deployments uh, to in country to Iraq for Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. So we know firsthand how difficult it can be for our military families. So please know that we are here to support you if at any time um, you feel that your child needs an extra check-in because we have those monthly check-ins. And sometimes, and I can speak 
uh, from the heart because I, I lived it with my own children because they were young during that time. It was right after 9-11. Sometimes they don't turn uh, to the school for support and they mask it very well. But that is why it is so important for us to have that communication between home and school so that we are there for each other because we are but a phone call away, a, a text message away, an email away, but please know that we will be checking in on your kiddos and, and uh, thank you for pointing it out. I did note, we will check in on the families as well. A simple phone call home, just to say, how are things going? What can we do to, to further support? Do know that that is coming and we have made note of it. Thank you very much. And we work, I'm sorry, and we work really good, really well with our principals. And if you can't come to us, we will go to you. We will, they will send us out and we will go to you. We will deliver whatever you need. Um, both social workers are always there to serve our families. So if you can't come to us, we will definitely go to you. So let us know how we can help. All right. Well, I think we've we've had a, a, a good conversation, actually an awesome conversation about how we can better serve you. Uh, these are not only techniques we'll use with our military connected families, but these are also techniques that I think, you know, back to what Mr. Lopez indicated for all our families, because all of our families here in San Luis Sadio, uh, they deserve to soar. And so I know that you uh, parents could have spent your time anywhere else today. I am so thankful that you chose to spend it with us. And on behalf of San Luisario ISD, our Board of Trustees, we're going to give you a yay on this end. This is what we do. We're celebrating you. So thank you for everything that you do to help us. Um, with that being said, we are going to conclude this meeting. We do thank you. Remember, it is recorded. So if you have families out there, um, we will also make sure that we're going to be sending out the Spanish and the English link uh, so that uh, families who did not get to join us are able to do so. With that being said, I think Horacio, we're signing off. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all. Thank you guys. Horacio, is that a wrap?